We're expecting any moment now uh, to be uh, getting uh, live coverage of day one of the Cabinet Lakotla uh, taking place at the Union Building. Indeed, the economy is likely to be top of the agenda. As Pamant Lakoke also, uh, you know, heading up uh, that update for us because Minister in the Presidency, Mondele Gugumel, is expected to brief the media. But with that being said, let's go there live right now. Uh, colleagues, uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for coming in the early hours as we normally work together. My name is William Banoe. I'm from um, with the team. Uh, I think you all know U Minister, our Minister in the Presidency, but also the Minister that's responsible for uh, communications of uh, government, Minister Mundi Kungubele. I saw the other one writing the they say the name wrongly, but I, I said, no, no, it's Minister uh, Kungubele. <laughs> and uh, we are starting the Lokota today. Minister will be taking you through in terms of uh, whatever he feels that uh, he can uh, give it to you. Remember, you are a very important platform uh, that takes everything that government does to all the corners of not only the country, but the region, but also uh, the continent. So, Minister. Uh, these are our colleagues, uh, I call them part of the staff of GCIS. He's social uh, distance, eh? <laughs> so I, I can... <laughs> yes, okay. yes, Minister, you can uh, remove it because mm. they read your lips mm. from home. Minister, uh, you can give uh, the colleagues the synopsis of the Lakutla that is going to start. Thank you. Good morning, uh, guys. All media houses. Can I express my appreciation? Thank you very much for waking up so early to link up with us with regard to assisting South Africa to understand where government is going and what our pursuing. We are going on a cabinet lichutla, which is going to be today, tomorrow, and the day after tomorrow. Uh, if you remember, our last lichutla was around January. Uh, we are meeting colleagues uh, during the COVID. Uh, there's a number of stakeholders who will be joining. Of course, the Lichutla the, the will be chaired by both the president and the deputy president, attended by ministers, deputy ministers, premiers, mayors, leadership of SALGA, the directors general, and all other leaders of various uh, organs of the state. Uh, we deliberately want this diversity to ensure that we work hard to coincide both in terms of what we see and what we do to improve integration so that we can secure the capacity that is from an integrated governance. President will open it uh, today at about 11 o'clock. We expect the president to reflect on the journey since 2019. Naturally, 2019 would have observed the state of the country from the point of economic growth, uh, the ratio of investment to GDP, level of poverty, a number of people at work, and uh, a number of related issues, inflation and whatever. And uh, of course, the issues of inequality, poverty, unemployment, would have reflected, we would have seen those issues, and the president will actually address that, making his overview on how far we've gone with regard to those issues. Uh, there will be a presentation, of course, on the pandemic vaccination rollout, which has become very key now in order to unleash our economy. Uh, the NDP, NPC, National Planning Commission, will actually reflect, uh, acting as a mirror with regard to whether we're on course towards the vision of 2030, as was articulated as late as 2012. We are also going to have an opportunity then to listen to the presentation of the medium-term strategic framework, which seeks to translate the NTP goals into some kind of action that can impact on the lives of people. We'll also be looking at the trends. For instance, the baseline in 2019 as it was, and where are we? <clears throat> we don't have very good news. For instance, if you talk about economy, uh, around 2019, we'd be, we would have been speaking about 0.1% uh, 
economic growth, having an, had an ambition that by the end of this term, why 2%? You know now it's a common knowledge that economy shrunk during the, the pandemic. The economic recovery, reconstruction and recovery plan, a major, major, major document, which the president uh, presented to the nation October 2015, it will be interrogated how far it has actually performed. You will know, amongst other things, already no less than 700,000 uh, people it has absorbed on mass employment, with young people being 60%. We'll look at that, but at the end of the day, we hope to demonstrate that we would have looked at all sectors that we are trying to unleash with the focus being absorption uh, of employment, especially the areas of agriculture, food security, those areas which are the areas we trust to absorb the low-skilled uh, base and those areas which will assist us to deal with desperation of food access and so on. In a nutshell, that's what we'll be dealing with. Thank you very much, uh, Minister. I'm not sure, colleagues, if uh, you have uh, two or three questions, uh, but uh, you introduce yourself and then you ask your question. Yes, Good morning, Minister. My name is Zanda Nobo from News from <coughs> Africa. Two questions from you, especially as Minister of the Presidency. One, are you able to confirm whether or not the process to appoint a new Chief Justice has actually begun and is in earnest? It's less than 30 days to go before Mokong Mokong actually exits. Um, we know that, you, that your office would be tasked with dealing with that. Um, and another second question is, I think by now, we should have some sort of an indication from you on where Mrs. Kusela Diko is going to be placed uh, with the new government. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Is there any Thank other you. question, colleagues? Thank you. I think, uh, All right. Well, on the Chief Justice issue, I won't give you, I didn't actually, I didn't give myself an opportunity to update myself on that. So, uh, true, Zianda, I think we've spoken about the Kusela issue, that she is on a maternity leave, and that uh, she's no longer going to be the spokesperson of the president, that uh, she was given a warning with regard to disclosure, and then that... Uh, uh, when she comes back from maternity leave, the DG and the relevant leadership of the institution will be attending to that. We're not in a position to deal with those details now. All what we know is that she is on a course to actually reflect on those, uh, what we call is omissions, and we hope she'll be fine. She's a woman who, who grew and made a major contribution to this country, but ready enough to accept that she can commit those mistakes and uh, go on a course of correction. So I'm, I'm not going to go to the details of exactly where she's going to go. Mr. Kumugele, mm. some get you from the SABC, but mm. are you not speaking with the fourth tongue of government, particularly knowing that you've got a president who said that the era of impunity is over, yet you just slap a person on the wrist for being involved in alleged corruption and simply redeploying them? to another strategic position within government as opposed to others who've been removed and fired. Is she uh, being uh, given a second chance? Unless some kind of got a different information which you don't have. Based on the facts at our disposal, there has been no finding against Mr. Tigo on corruption. All what Mr. Tigo is being... Uh, Mr. Uh, Tigo or Mrs. Tigo? Mrs. Tigo is being... Uh, what, what, what we're dealing with is an issue of a failure to disclose. But there is no evidence at our disposal of her having been involved in corruption. If that information exists, we'll deal with it at that time. <coughs> then why fire her as a spokesperson of the president if she's done nothing it, it, it is a failure to disclosure. It's not a good thing. But it's a, it's a, it's a misdemeanor that can be corrected within our labor laws. Our labor laws are not readily and summarily punitive. It depends on the nature of the offense. Sometimes they correct. She's, on, she's subjected to the corrective labor, labor law, what you call process. So we're, we're comfortable with that. But in terms of corruption, we don't have that evidence. Yeah, no, thank you very much. Uh, from Minister. Uh, you mentioned the vaccination rollout program. 
will the cabinet be discussing the issue of the vaccine passport? But also number two, these 300,000 uh, vaccinations daily, that's the target, which is elusive. The president has been hammering that one, that he needs to see 300,000 daily vaccinations. It's not happening. What will be done to run that one up? But also, will the new Minister of Finance be making a presentation, bearing in mind that the medium-term budget policy statement is around the corner? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, if I remember the stats well, it's no less than 14 million now. Combination of both fully vaccinated and those uh, who are vaccinated first time in the Pfizer. No, it's the doses that are 14 million. No, no, oh. yes, I'm saying. Uh, that's why I'm saying fully vaccinated. Be, be, the difference between the total of those who are what to call, who, are, who, are, who, are, who, have, been who have been vaccinated, not fully. <laughs> so the doses are about 14 million, you're correct. Uh, we're still faced with the challenge of, uh, what do you call it, uh, hesitancy. We're working hard to educate our people with regard to how to connect that with the economy which is not performing and the need to unleash it, the relationship between vaccination and unleashing our economy and deal with the desperation in which our people of unemployment are finding themselves in. The second issue is the Minister of Finance. No, the Minister of Finance naturally will be doing a fiscal outlook today, uh, I think tomorrow, just to give us the picture of how we're performing there. And of course, expenditure pressures, and if there's need for any adjustment. The third thing that you asked for was? Vaccine passport. Oh, <laughs> listen, uh, the cabinet is engaged with a lot of innovative packages on how to encourage our people to, to vaccinate. Vaccine passport is one of those that are being considered. Uh, so to make sure that we are, our people start attending soccer matches like they do overseas, uh, but to check how can the vaccine passport assist us in that. But the key thing is, is looking at a digitized uh, uh, vaccine passport because the card one can be very problematic. So they are working on those and uh, they are towards, I'm sure, in a few weeks, they will be done about that. Thank you very much. Zianda, uh, last bite, and then, uh, then Sam Kelo. It appears you have another follow-up. Is that to do you are generous, we are generous <laughs> yeah. with the minister? <laughs> Thank you, minister. Um, mine is, firstly, when is the president going to start speaking to us after his addresses? Uh, when he comes and addresses the nation, because as the media, we don't have access to him. Um, I'm asking this because one of the questions that we'd also like to get from you, especially since you speak as minister in the presidency, is whether or not the president was really aware of the fact that former President Jacob Zuma would be granted medical parole, parole despite this going against uh, the recommendations by the medical uh, advisory panel. Well. When the president is going to speak to you, it depends in what form, because the president speaks to you a lot of times, family days, when speaks to you. But he let us or you want the uh, Q&A, yes, he comes and speaks alone. He doesn't <laughs> let us actually ask let questions. Me, let me have a coffee with the president on that. <laughs> uh, maybe he will be able to talk to me about it. On the second one, you see the, the issue of the former president, what counts to us? is that somebody who had a power to exercise that authority is Mr. Pfizer, the head of correctional service. And what comes to us is that the powers to deal with that are vested with him. If there are uh, any wrongdoings about that, we expect the normal uh, institutions to deal with that. But what comforts us is that the person who's in, who, in whom the powers are vested to deal with that, dealt with it. But was the president aware before it actually happened? That's, not, that's, an, that's an area where I'm not prepared to give a response. I think the president is better placed, but all I'm saying, we are comfortable that a relevant institution to take that decision is the one that took it. Some get off, and then the last five, <coughs> and then I think we'll release the minister. Mr. Kumbe, the basic income plan. Mm. I told, Treasury has told you there's no money. How uh, are you going to navigate through that in this particular report, knowing that these 350 
carry as little as we are, are a safety need to cushion the poor. Well, some kind of, the issue of basic income grant as a principle is generally agreed now in South Africa, across the spectrum, in, in particular the government part. What is being, what, what we are interrogating, if we were to execute it, how sustainable are we going to actually do it? But we know now it's a matter which is almost long overdue. Uh, the fact that the minister said there are fiscal pressures doesn't change the fact that we need to find innovative ways or now to make sure that we deal with the desperations. Uh, it may not be a straightforward saying everyone gets the basic income grant who is employed. We're looking at various packages, like for instance, do you deal with the household or do you deal with individuals or to what extent do you, do you, do, do you remember there's a series of grants, the child uh, grant, there's a old age grant and so on. We're looking at the package of all those things, but the bottom line is that our ambition is that we must be reach a stage where when there's not a single South African who has got no access to food. It is in that context when you deal with the basic income grant, but generally the principle is supported. Oh, thank you department very much. The last one, and then I will allow the minister to push. I know the Department of Health will deal with issues of vaccinations and stuff during this lecture, but when President Cyril Ramaphosa was encouraging South Africans to vaccinate, he said no one will be forced to take the vaccine. We have seen some private companies forcing people to take the vaccine or face a risk of losing their jobs. Government seems to be up walking around the position of what is really happening. Is the issue of compulsory vaccination going to be discussed during this government? What is the government's position? Because when we ask that question, we are always told that, well, we are looking into it, we are encouraging people to vaccinate. Are you for, are you for compulsory vaccination? Uh, as a matter of this country being constitutionally based, there is no contradiction between what the president said and what our constitution it says. But there's a situation that we're confronted with where we say it is ideal that all South Africans should vaccinate. But we'll always make sure that whatever way it is done, it does not breach our constitution. That's how far I can answer that question. Are you vaccinated? Yes. Or do you want a card? Which one? <laughs> Which one is your card? Yeah. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Minister. Thank you very much for your Thank time. Thank you, guys. I'm sure if, uh, Minister, you want to make some closing. No, no. I, I just want to say, uh, I want to thank you guys as usual. We appreciate the, end, the issue of the entire leadership of the state in directing with media. And uh, on an ongoing basis, we will attend on how best we can do that. Communication an approach is an is, is a continuous adaptive 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 what we call uh, exercise how you improve under covid how you change all right, taking us up to 19 minutes uh, after 8 o'clock. A bit of a, a busy pre-briefing, if mm. uh, you mm. will, from uh, Minister in the Presidency, Mondli Gongabele. Yeah. Uh, the uh, union building is going to be hosting this at day one of the cabinet briefing. There's, there is so much to go through. I so won't be much. able to go uh, through it all, but you can expect with the cabinet Lakhotla issues being asked about uh, the new Chief Justice. When is that decision going to be made? Right. Vaccine passports, vaccine uh, being made mandatory as well. The economy, of course, mm. are going to come up uh, as well and then <laughs> uh, you, you can't help some journalists they're going to throw in the Jacob Zuma question aren't they <laughs>